Hey guys, welcome once again to the One Coin Arcade. And as always, we're on the quest to play all the old school and new school arcade machines one coin at a time. And today we're going to be playing Ninja Gaiden. Now, this came out in 1988, and uh, it's a classic game. You guys probably remember all the console games for this that came out in the NES and even the Sega Master System version. This is where it all began in the arcade, and it's a little bit different, so we're going to show you today. So as you can see, the, the basis of this game isn't actually a, a platforming game. This is actually a beat-em-up game. Um, not a very well-refined beat-em-up game, unfortunately, but we'll get into that in a little minute. But I actually enjoyed playing this quite a lot in my childhood. Obviously, as you're a kid and games aren't as advanced back then, you can put up with a lot more. And uh, this was at my milk bar, as I've mentioned in other videos, the games would rotate, so you'd have like Bubble Bobble, Snow Brothers, and then you'd have this occasionally, Ninja Gaiden. So, while I'd get my Slurpee or whatever, I'd put a lot of coins into this machine, and uh, if you ever get a hold of this game, or this machine, that's what you're going to find you're going to be doing. You're going to be spending a lot of coins. Uh, I've got the difficulty adjusted to really, really easy, extra health, extra lives, everything, and I can tell you right now, even with this setting, I'm not going to last that long. Uh, the, the hit detection in this game is incredibly unforgiving. Uh, more often than not, unless you're in perfect position, the enemies are always going to be able to hit you, but as you can see there, before you hit them, and it's incredibly frustrating, which is a real shame, because the actual combat in this game with your main character is incredibly satisfying, and just like uh, the console versions, as you can see, our main character here is Ryu, or Ryu, however you pronounce him in your side of the world. And, uh, yeah, it's a typical beat-em-up cliche storyline. Your job is to end uh, all the chaos going on in the world, gangs, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, what's pretty cool is you've got, uh, you, your normal attack here. Uh, first of all, I better go through the buttons. You've actually got a jump button, and you've got an attack button. And then you've also got this button that will allow you to grab onto certain ledges or poles, things like that. And you can hang, and you can actually beat people up while you're sort of, uh, hanging from a ledge or whatever, which is pretty cool. Oh, damn, he got me. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, so you've got this regular attack here. If you're lucky enough and you can find some really cool items, you'll be able to, like, attack everyone with a sword as well. It's imperative that you find a sword because, honestly, that makes life so much easier if you got the sword. You only get to hold it for a limited amount of time, unfortunately. And uh, it, it, it's all luck, unfortunately. There's no specific spot where you can find these weapons. You just gotta hope you put in a coin and you find it very, very early in the game in one of the items. Now, usually how you find items is like uh, breaking one of these objects. As you can see here, I just got a health item. What you can do is when you jump uh, over an enemy, if you press attack at the same time, you can actually uh, pick him up and flip him over your head, which is really, really cool. It's a nice little feature in this game. Uh, but what's a, pr a problem with that again is if you completely miss time it, you just leave yourself completely open for an attack. Uh, so like I said with this game, guys, there's absolutely no margin for error. And here we go. I think we're up to our first boss battle soon. I think there's about five worlds or five levels in this total. Um, this kind of works similar to sort of like a console checkpoint system. Uh, if you die and you make it to a certain part of the level, you'll be able to continue on uh, when you insert a continue. Or when you insert a coin, you can continue on from where you died or close to where you died. Uh, what's really frustrating about this game is even though uh, it's an arcade coin op, I've never finished it because in the very last level, you don't get very many checkpoints and I find even on this setting, the game is overwhelmingly difficult. So, if you ever play this beat-em-up, guys, it's definitely not for the faint of heart. Uh, as I said, uh, the combat is incredibly satisfying, however, the hit detection is not. So, this is definitely as fun as it is frustrating. Um, what I've always liked about these sort of 80 styles beat em up 2, too, is all the bosses usually replicate um, either rock stars or professional wrestlers of the day. I think with the exception of this one, we're taking on this big sumo wrestler here. Uh, but as you can see, you've, you've got these guys in the mud. It's, it's a whole pile of pop culture references in here. These guys kind of look like Jason Voorhees. In the next level, uh, the, the main bosses, unfortunately I don't think we're going to see them in this playthrough, but they kind of look like the Road Warriors. And, uh, yeah, it just feels very much a product of its time, this game. Oh, crap. <laughs> and, uh, just like in other beat-em-ups, the, the biggest problem in this is actually the cronies. Like, the boss himself is actually not that difficult here. But it's every freaking other person getting in the way. There we go. I thought he was dead with all that flashing. 
There we go, we got him now. Let's see if we can get rid of these guys. See, I'm trying to jump that flip move that I was telling you about a little bit earlier. Oh, crap! Alright, we've got one more life left. We should... That's the one forgiving thing about this game. At least when you die, you do, like, flash invincible for all of two seconds. <laughs> oh. There, we got that sunfish. Don't forget to hashtag that, by the way. We're starting a sunfish movement. All these enemies are sunfishes. Alright, so that's level one of five offer credits. Not too bad, sort of. <laughs> so this is an annoying start to level. You've got to avoid all this traffic. It's all pretty randomised. Oh, gosh, it's not fun. This kind of reminds me of that uh, movie Bowfinger when Eddie Murphy had to run across the road. Ah, oh, crap. Oh, well, it wasn't pretty, but we made it across at least. Let's see how far we can make these last three blocks of health. Last. I like these nighttime levels too. The graphics look pretty nice for an old school game here. As you can see, most of the enemies have just got a simple reskin just with different outfits and stuff, but I don't mind. At least it kind of looks like something different to see. Keeping in mind the age of the game, of course. We're going to hop across the highway again. And are we playing Ninja Gaiden and are we playing Frogger today? Far out. <laughs> ah no! Jumped in the freaking car. Ah oh, no, we've got one block of health left. This could be over, guys. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm trying to survive here. Oh, get out of there! Oh, wow, talk about close. <laughs> Music in this game is actually pretty decent. I mean, it's not outstanding or award-winning, but uh, it's acceptable. At least I find the music in this game is not going to be repetitive. I don't find I always die when I talk about music in these games. But anyway, guys, that was Ninja Gaiden. It's a fun beat-em-up, although it is incredibly frustrating. Uh, not really acceptable for a casual gamer, but if you're a hardcore gamer, you might get something out of this. And as always, guys, thanks for joining us. If you like what we do, please share, subscribe, tell your friends about us, and we'll see you next time at OneCoin Only.